Today we are talking about timing is everything, how to build habits for leadership success with Christopher D. Connors. For those that I have not met, my name is Jamie Thomason. I started out with Merchant as a simulation specialist, that human in the loop. And now I have the great pleasure of bringing together practitioners and thought leaders and researchers and experts like yourselves into the space to have conversations about the future of work. So I want to officially welcome all of you to our Future of Work virtual roundtable series with Mersion, and most especially welcome Christopher D. Connors. Yes, thank you so much, Jamie. So I'm, I'm coming live from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, Jamie, I, I was going to actually just stay in the chat and, and talk sports because I see that we have a lot of sports fans here. I was asked about my I think you might be able to see my, my Yankees hat in the background. So I grew up outside of New York City, but I live here now in Charleston. So, again, it's really, really great to be here with all of you and, and probably not a bad idea to tease uh, just the influence that sports has had on me uh, throughout my life and, and in my business career. Uh, so much so that. I'd like to start the presentation with it today. So um, one of the better books that I've ever read uh, is actually authored uh, by the man that you see on the screen. And, and some of you may recognize him as uh, really one of the greatest sports coaches, certainly in American history and, and overall, probably one of the, the best sports coaches of all time is Phil Jackson. Uh, he was the head basketball coach of the Chicago Bulls and the Los Angeles Lakers. And uh, a lot of the wisdom that I've learned uh, from his work and his coaching career uh, has greatly shaped my own. So I have a little story to tell about that. And as you can see, this, the quote on the screen, we need a certain degree of structure in our lives, but we also require enough latitude to express ourselves creatively. And I wanted to use this to shape uh, today's conversation about creating winning habits because so much of what Phil Jackson uh, brought to the Chicago Bulls in the early 1990s was an incredible structure that one of the game's all-time greats, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and, and many of his other teammates were able to work effectively in. Phil Jackson knew that in order for Michael Jordan to be able to take his career and that team to a championship level, that they needed a really defined structure for the team to be able to operate effectively. They also really needed to master emotional intelligence and overall spiritual and mental wellness and toughness. So what did that mean? Well, Phil Jackson's heavily influenced uh, by his upbringing in a very uh, Christian household, but also we know him as the Zen master of having a very Buddhist influence on the way that he approaches mindfulness and meditation. And by providing that structure of mindfulness and meditation practice to his players, he allowed them both mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to think and imagine and be very, very creative about instilling a mindset of toughness, of winning, of creativity. Physically, what Phil Jackson was known for was installing an offense called the triangle offense, which perfectly dovetails with the quote that you see on the screen. By installing that offense, he provided structure but literally millions of different iterations and flow within that system that his basketball players could function effectively and truly be themselves. But what he knew is that without that structure, everything would fall apart. Things would become much more individualistic. So by having a habit of a meditation practice at each basketball practice that they had, by having some spiritual rituals before each game that the Chicago Bulls and Los Angeles Lakers played, Phil Jackson was able to really instill a system of structure and of habit that took him to 11 world championships and coaching some of the greatest players in the world as well, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and many, many others. He was able to take extraordinary talent and take it to a truly transformational level. And it all started with the structure that he had. So I like to start there because on a team level, we see the importance of structure. But for us as individuals, we can actually do the same thing and we can customize a strategy, an overall approach to time management that's backed by habits that is gonna enable us to be truly successful. So where does that begin? And maybe what you're seeing on the screen right now might seem a little bit unconventional, but in the world that I live in, uh, emotional intelligence is my expertise. 
And what I've learned through gain, gaining a deeper knowledge about myself and in helping to facilitate that self-discovery and growth for others is that the more that we understand ourselves, our limitations, our strengths, our talents, skills, and experiences, the more we're going to be able to affect positive change, not just in our lives, but in the lives of others. So what is self-awareness? It's the art of understanding yourself. It's recognizing, processing those emotions and understanding then from a self-management standpoint, how they could affect ourselves and others. But self-awareness is also how we perceive others to see us. And how does this relate to setting habits and time management? It's really about recognizing what we're facing and then determining from a self-management standpoint, how we're going to go about either reacting or being proactive in our behavior and setting ourselves up for success. Something that I talked about in my first book, The Value of You, I talk about building a game plan for self-awareness and true growth begins with a very solid foundation in personal development. It starts by combining the passion. What are we enthusiastic? What are we truly inspired by? What lights the fire inside of us to give us that self-motivation piece of emotional intelligence that powers us to highlighting a bedrock foundation of values? Things like hard work, integrity, honesty, and certainly from a time management standpoint, discipline. Could be the perseverance that we have each day and the roles that we're in looking to affect change. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the work of Simon Sinek. He wrote a very famous book called Start With Why. And that to me is what purpose really is, is why are we doing what we're doing? And as we go through the rest of the uh, wheel here and we get to our mission of defining success and then setting goals that are backed by habits, once we have those habits backing the goals, which are all empowered with the foundation of the things that you see on the screen, that's really what leads to the wins, the success, happiness, and fulfillment, all of the things that we're really trying to achieve. And so I hope that by seeing this foundation here, you're able to recognize just how valuable it is to have this foundation uh, for success, but also in terms of really setting winning habits. So the five pillars of emotional intelligence as originally defined by Daniel Goleman, we talk about self-awareness, uh, self-management or self-regulation, empathy, motivation, and social skill. As we go along, self-awareness connects directly to self-management. It's holding yourself accountable to commitments, managing the different emotions that you're going to have and doing so in a very healthy way. Um, and I highlight with an asterisk there toward the bottom of the screen, uh, and you're welcome to share in the chat here, just how many of us have, have truly had to adapt our time management and habits in what for many of us over the last 15 months has been a virtual environment. It's been a huge transition for so many to go from the workplace to being at home with children. And, and as the father of three very young children, including one under the age of one, uh, born last year during uh, the middle of the pandemic, I think we could all attest to the fact that sometimes in the middle of a very important call, when we hear a baby scream or our child decides to open the door and let us know how uh, wonderful playing with toys is, of course, we have to adapt in those situations, not just on the fly, but also in terms of both our short and long-term management and setting of time. Um, I think many of us would agree that it's been a true blessing to be able to spend more time with family and the ones that we love, but knowing that that maybe wasn't the way we were before in a professional environment, it comes with its differences and challenges. And so the spirit of adaptability is knowing when to stay the course and of course, knowing when to change and how to do so accordingly. So how do you become a better self-manager? And that's a lot of what I'm here for today to talk about as far as habits go and organization. But I also want you to think about it as well from the mindset of wellness. So organization first in terms of how we just structure our days and plan them. Go beyond calendar meetings. I'd say the number one sign that in people struggling with successful time management and discipline principles in the coaching work that I do and in the speaking work that I've done in a variety of organizations is that I hear a very common excuse and maybe you've said it yourself. I don't have the time. 
I've heard I don't have the time, more times than I could ever probably recount. But further than that, when you really boil down, well, what does that even mean? I think we see so many people actually managing to their calendar. We're often managing to the different scheduled time blocks on our calendar that we don't necessarily have ownership of in some instances. Maybe it's a meeting, maybe it's a quick uh, proposal call that we're gonna be a part of or an operations call. If you're setting as a leader a one-on-one or a team meeting, you do have control over that, but those are the things that fall into the fixed category. My question that I'd like to ask to all of you, and, and you're welcome to jump in here on the chat, is how can you take greater ownership of your calendar so that you start planning in blocks of time that center around execution, your overall wellness, building relationships and greater connection with the other people on your team, because that's where the wins come from. And that empowers you and it gives you more structure to succeed. We'll touch a little bit here in the next couple of minutes on savers. And the last part is just the locking it in. I'll highlight my five stages of time management here toward the end of the presentation, but unless we have something that we have deliberately taken the discipline to do, first beginning with the idea and then the discipline to actually lock into our calendar, that's what makes it a priority. And the habit of doing that on a daily but weekly basis really what unlocks the secret to really successful uh, habit setting. So I talked a little bit about wellness. Uh, we seemingly are familiar these days with the ubiquitous term of self-care. And so I'm here to kind of demonstrate a little bit, well, what does that mean? And so I see it through the four dimensions of wellness and well-being. Certainly talking about the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual side of things. And I teed that up a little bit in the initial conversation about Coach Phil Jackson, and that he recognized that without each one of these things, the Chicago Bulls and the Los Angeles Lakers wouldn't be as successful as they became. And that exact same logic can be applied to teams in the environments that we all work in, but really as well in our personal life. So I'd ask you, are you checking the box on these things on a daily and weekly basis? Are you building in habits to your schedule and to your overall approach to conquering the week? that make time for these things. One area that I'll speak to right off the top for me is mindfulness. And this is an easy, easy way. Uh, one tool that I have found that has had a transformational impact on my life, I use it every single day, including in the hour uh, leading up to our time together now. I use an app called Insight Timer. You don't have to be partial to that one in particular. There's Calm. Headspace, there's many, many other uh, apps that are out there in the different uh, iOS and Google marketplaces that are totally free. And the more I think about it, it's actually unbelievable that we have these resources literally at our fingertips that we can access on demand whenever we want. Uh, having a mindfulness meditation practice has changed my life. It's helped me to think more clearly and more strategically. It's helped me to find greater inner peace but it's also actually helped me a lot with finding balance in my life. And it's, I've incorporated this into the coaching work that I do. And that actual part of spiritual and emotional well being uh, cannot be, you can't put a price on it. Mindfulness and other aspects of self care that we'll learn a little bit more here in the savers uh, slide I have coming up help us to avoid burnout. They help us to push forward on the days when we're lacking in sleep or lacking in energy. We can't always bring maximum energy and motivation to every single day. We can do our best, but on the days where we know that we're not at 100%, it's these parts of self-care and our aspects of well-being that really make a big difference in driving us forward and how we go about successfully living each day. So how many folks in the room and, and at this point, I'd like to open it up as well. Feel free for those of you. I'm, I'm just kind of giving, getting an opportunity here to check uh, the chat. 
And I just see the, the most latest one that came in was from Sarah about Inside Timer, which I, I really appreciate. Um, but feel free for those of you on the call, either in the chat or to speak up. How many of you are familiar with the work of Hal Elrod? He wrote a book called The Miracle Morning, which is where uh, savers actually came from, what you see on the screen. I was going to say you can even use like the little raise hand function if you want. All right, so we'll have more opportunity in the Q and A, guys. I just, in the interest of of our time here together, I just wanted to share. So, this acronym has had a pr profound influence on my life. It's it's actually just the best tool that I've seen for organizing so many of the different parts of self care. And the more that we organize and bake these things into our daily and weekly schedule, the more they become habit. About that with the example, a little bit of mindfulness and having a meditation practice. And that's where we start right at the top here with the S in savers is for silence. So my preference these days is a guided meditation, but you can also do silent meditation without a guided voice. Uh, for those of you uh, religiously inclined, of course, prayer is another aspect of that. It could just simply be spending time in solitude. And I'll tell you that the very best ideas that I've ever had in my life, the ones that maybe made their way into my books or became uh, the starting and tipping point for uh, an outline of a book or a talk that I've given have come from having time in solitude and quiet and really just using that time for thinking, the power of having a great thought life and, and mixing in ideas. The A is for positive affirmations, speaking positive things and positive words over your life. Uh, as simple as this sounds, it could just be uh, if you have a presentation this week or you have a project deliverable coming up, saying to yourself, either in your, the voice inside your head or even verbalizing it out loud, I am going to do well here. Could just be the things that we all speak intuitively over our lives that make a very powerful difference. The more we infuse positivity into that each day, uh, psychologically, the more it influences our behavior visualizing success. And this is something to go back to the theme of where we started with coach Phil Jackson. Uh, another part of the mindfulness practice that he had for those great Bulls and Lakers teams was asking the players to sit around in a circle, close their eyes and literally visualize themselves making winning plays in the basketball game that would occur that evening. Even in the work that I do right now here with you, so much of the way that I prepare for talks, presentations, and trainings that I deliver, I visualize myself sitting in the seat that I'm in right now and delivering uh, things like this. Visualization for me of seeing myself uh, succeed, seeing myself go through a process has had a transformative impact on the way that I think and, and my actions. And the last three are pretty, pretty self-explanatory, the exercise, reading, and scribing. So Going back to the degrees of wellness there and self-care around the physical, mental side of things, um, some people would say that scribing and keeping a journal has a spiritual side to it as well. I was just coaching somebody within the past week who told me that they have a daily journaling practice that has had a very positive, very spiritual influence on their life. Um, sometimes it's a way for us to process our emotions. It's a way to lock in and remember certain things that happened in a given day lessons learned that we have. So the genius of this in so many ways is the acronym of SAVERS. It's very easy for us to remember, but I wanted to share this with you because going back to where we were in the game plan, uh, this is such a foundational piece for me of setting up habits for success that some people might overlook. So we stay on the theme of, of building winning habits. And what you see here are things that were very much inspired uh, by Phil Jackson. And I alluded a little bit earlier to a couple of the books that he had written, uh, 11 Rings, The Soul of Success. But uh, the first book that he had written now coming up on close to 30 years ago uh, is one of my absolute favorite books. It's had a transformative impact on my life. It's called Sacred Hoops. And it was about his journey in life uh, up until that time in the uh, early to mid 1990s. So inspired by Phil Jackson and through my own interpretation, I wanted to share a couple of things that really help you to build winning habits. First and foremost, I think you've probably already been able to see from me today in terms of my foundational approach, loving the fundamentals. 
getting excited about and embracing the different components of managing the time in your day. And as we'll see here shortly, I want to be able to take that word of planning and kind of flip it around. And I'll tease that until we get to the next slide. But loving the fundamentals, both in the self-awareness piece of how we build ourselves up, but ultimately how we manage our time and build habits in. Get lost in that process and love the fundamentals. The more energy and self-motivation from an emotional intelligence standpoint that you can bring to setting those fundamentals, the better. Number two, again, having a structure is really important. But if you remember where we started with that great quote from Coach Jackson, it's having the latitude for creativity within what you do. So I've sometimes had people ask me after talks, you know, hey, Chris, what would be, what would you recommend as far as the way that I go about managing my time? And I come back with an answer that's what you see on the screen. I say, find what works for you. Set up a structure, but within that structure, have a lot of latitude and creativity to find what's going to work for you. Because even in the year 2021, it's tempting to think that we spend most of our time electronically here on a computer screen, or we're utilizing different tools like iCal or Outlook or Google Calendar, uh, could be Evernote, OneNote, things of that nature. But sometimes it just comes down to a good handwritten journal that enables us to maintain a to-do list, uh, enables us to prioritize for success, and those things can drive us. And so every individual is different. I always say, have a structure, but find what works for you. And last but not least, it's kind of that wash, rinse, and repeat. Learn from what works. Learn from what doesn't work because chances are you're going to actually benefit and be more successful from the mistakes or the things that didn't work. Grow and adapt. Tweak what you use. Uh, I can tell you that where I was just even five years ago from how I manage my time and build habits is different than what it is today. I've tweaked, I've adjusted, and I've adapted. Um, and again, there's a variety of different tools out there. Uh, even a tool that comes to managing tasks, for example, is Trello, which is something that I use. Um, if that works for you, great. If it doesn't, find what does. Embrace the fundamentals and the creative side of creating that structure that's going to work for you. So I talked a little bit about the structure of habits and time blocks. Uh, and here's just an example, a little flavor that I like to show, uh, depending on the organization that I'm working with. Uh, especially if you're in sales, for example, there's prospecting time that you're going to have, right? But then there's also that administrative function that you're going to have. And what you can do is set up time blocks that are going to work for you. Um, I happen to be more of an Outlook person. So I'll use the task function and I color code items that I've memorized at this point by heart. And that's how I plan out and structure the time on my calendar. I'm very keen to point out, and I'm probably going to repeat what I said earlier, but I don't plan every single minute of every day. I allow some time in there for creativity. I allow time in there for a nice walk outside to refresh and recharge. But the blocks that I have empower me with a structure to be able to put in self-care time, family time. And hopefully this resonates with those of you on the call that for me, that family time is between 5.30 and 8 o'clock every night. And I do the very best that I can to take full ownership of that and not take any calls or not try to check emails or things during that time. Um, I try to dedicate to the most important things. And that for me is my, my most important time is my time with my family. So as you look at the different blocks on the screen, again, give yourself the creativity and the latitude to be able to choose what those are for you. And the more you begin to embrace this and start to execute on the planning of that, truly the more fun that it becomes. I'd like to say that in so many ways, this time that I get at the start of the day is when the real genius and creativity and imagination comes in. It's when the real ideas begin to start bubbling. And those ideas are wonderful, right? But if we don't have something that then backs that up and fixes it onto our calendar, into time blocks where we can really dedicate time to execute on it, then they're just ideas, right? So point is, choose what works for you. Hopefully this is a good example of what you can use to color code and, and use on your calendar.
So what are some of the best practices for a great daily routine? I really didn't start blocking focus time until the last few months. And what happens is then my calendar's open. So people get these little tiny meetings in the middle of when I had blocks of time and everything, was, I was constantly task switching. And so it was very helpful to me to just go ahead and, and give myself blocks of time that I could, could say, okay, I'm working on this. And then if somebody reaches out to me, it's like, hey, this is the only time I can meet with you. Then yeah, I can open that up. But, but just that, that one little thing that, that I added to my calendar has definitely made a difference for me, um, but something that I have to do a lot more of for myself. And, and to your point that, that self-care you know, or, or giving yourself that, reminding us that silence can be golden, you know, it can be that time of creativity. I love that. So let's see what we've got. Um, don't feel guilty to set aside time for yourself. Yes. Blocking out administrative time at the end of each work day, meeting free time, just time without meetings. I love that. Um, Janice said, my grandmother always would say the morning makes the day, start the day early with positive affirmations. Yep. And Erica shared, she blocks her calendar in the mornings often to allow herself to jot down thoughts from the day before. Also love walking on the treadmill, uh, treadmill desk as you work. Holy guacamole. Talk about <laughs> multitasking. <laughs> She's multitasking health and work. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and I just earlier, um, David just mentioned, he said, you know, what Christopher is talking about is proactively scheduling your priorities rather than attempting to assign priorities to the schedule so that you take control of your life. Some of the things, not the least of which was the treadmill desk, Erica, which was, was truly awesome uh, to see. Um, but a lot of what was highlighted uh, in there are, are, are indeed best practices and, and really, really enjoyed seeing. And I liked that piece from the, the EQ standpoint as well about, you know, not feeling guilty for having time for you. And, and that's something that, you know, that goes overlooked. Like, what about the emotions that we have when we do decide to build in that time? And then maybe the evening comes in and we're tired or we're stressed and we're caught up over the fact, oh, I didn't get to X, Y, or Z, but not building in time for yourself is, is definitely, definitely a recipe for disaster especially in this virtual environment. So I really, really enjoyed that perspective. And some of the ones that jump out for me here, just consistency and to kind of uh, take the baton from Jamie where she was, you know, and, and describing what she did, I think, you know, that's wonderful. Just can you do it, you know, doing, doing that consistently, doing that each day, each week. Um, and the big thing that I point out with the consistency standpoint of setting habits and dedicating time at the start and end of each day, guys, it only has to be 10 or 15 minutes. I think what people lose when it comes to habits and time management is thinking that it has to be this enormous amount of time. Do your weekly planning on a Sunday night, dedicate 30 minutes, 45 if you can. But at the beginning of a day, you may just need five or 10 minutes to really get up and running. And so it's not as much time as you think. And that's why I go back to where we were before with, uh, if you think you don't have the time, chances are you may just have a couple of minutes there that when used the right way are gonna have huge impact. Consistency, commitment, discipline, a lot of the values that go behind the best practices. And a lot of the things here that we talked about already with some of the different tools and the flexibility of it. So I'll close here with uh, something that I put together several years ago as an article that I had written that got picked up uh, by CNBC and I called it the stages of time management. It's something I've iterated on and worked on over the last couple of years. And we'll close here. I just wanted to start with that for me, everything begins with an idea. And that's the power that comes from that solitude time. If for you, that time is in a coffee shop or it's on a walk or a jog, um, might be on your morning commute. Even if you're not going to work right now, maybe you're driving to Starbucks to get your coffee, unless you're a Dunkin' Donuts person, of course. But it's that idea creation and the imagination time. Everything really begins with that idea for what you want to do, for what matters most to you, and for knowing how you're going to then try to determine what are the factors that fall into how I'm going to prioritize for that day from a business standpoint. And then it's the discipline. And actually, a lot of stress here that I have on this discipline aspect of it is Really, it's the time spent. It's putting that time on the calendar and willing yourself 
to dedicate to planning and carrying out those daily tasks. I teased this a little bit earlier, guys. I said, I want you to rethink the way that you say the word planning. And actually, if you go and look up the definition of strategy, one of the definitions for strategy is a plan. And I love the quote on the screen, strategy is a fancy word for coming up with a plan. And so if nothing else, I want you to walk away from this slide here, make a little mindset shift of shifting from thinking about planning to thinking about that time as actually strategy. It'll have a very, very big influence on the way that you approach and think of time. Of course, this is where the money's made, right? The process, the routine, the actual putting things on the calendar, the schedule management, and then the execution of it. Um, customize your experience. Goodness knows we've talked about that here today, is make it work for you. Great process leads to routine, which leads to habits. And last but not least is the reflection time at the end of your day. And I always tell people, it doesn't always have to be at the end of your business day. Maybe you have a call that wraps up right at five o'clock and you're just immediately going from five o'clock to being a parent, or you're going from five o'clock into whatever the next activity is that you have that's gonna fall outside of work hours. So what about if you have just 15 minutes in the evening at 8.45 or nine o'clock? Spend that time in reflection. What worked well? What can you maybe improve? But these are the questions on the mind of someone who has a constantly improving mindset. And I think that to really round out the circle of habit, Reflection is imperative. So I'll close there. How might we have this conversation? How might you be able to help your team uh, along this way to share some of these strategies uh, with others? And Hey, Teo, how's everything going today? Uh, uh, not, not too bad. Uh, pretty busy as usual, I guess, but um, I can't complain overall. Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I, you, you don't seem your normal self or, you know, you seem, if you don't mind me saying it, maybe a little bit overwhelmed right now. Would that be fair? Yeah, uh, that, that's definitely fair. You know, it, sometimes it feels like uh, I, I manage to get one task under my belt. And as soon as I feel like I've got that handled, three more get dumped onto my desk. And, you know, it's just, it's a busy time right now. And, I, and I'm just trying to adjust, you know. Yeah, and, and, and as you know, you've been one of really our most valuable assets as an employee. And, and typically, I know you're always right on top of things. And, and recently, it's been a little bit of a challenge. I know, I know there's been more pressures. And, and we're now yeah. two weeks out from the next deliverable being due. Um, as, as you know, just within the past 10 days, there's been a little bit more pressure from upper management on us to uh, meet this deadline of, of Wednesday, June 9th. How do you feel about that today? Do you think we're going to be able to get there? Well, um, I think it'll be it'll be close, but um, I, I, we're I guess I'm just going to have to find some way to get it all done. I, I mean, it, there's not really an option, right? Like we got to got to figure out how to get over the finish line on this. Yeah. Well, let, let me first ask. So. How are you currently going about setting up time with the project team, Teo? Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean, like as far as meetings or? Yeah, are you are you guys having, uh, are, are you meeting weekly or are you, are you meeting? I, I wanted to maybe just first get a better idea of the frequency of the meetings that are taking place. Right. And and then if you, are, are you finding that to be effective? Well, you know, I, everyone's just kind of working down their task list as fast and as furious as they can. Um, we don't have anything set per se. I think usually it's like, hey, we have a roadblock. Let's meet on for 10 minutes and, and try to get this resolved. But um, nothing nothing set in stone. I think everyone's just doing their best to get, get through all of the stuff that they can get through. So I, I haven't had any like official meetings with anyone in probably four or five days. Okay. Well, as we look out at the next two weeks, so we're, we're talking, we got 10 business days here before this is due. So um, what do you think would work best right now as far as setting up a, a meeting structure with the team? Oh, I, I don't know. I, like I said, it's more just the fact that 
that we're so busy. I mean, I know my schedule is just, it's, it's very hectic right now. And so, you know, unless we're meeting at like, I don't know, maybe nine o'clock at night, <laughs> I just, I feel like we need time to work on the things that we have and, and adding additional meetings to the work schedule. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Well, how about, how about this? You know, one idea that I have is, is maybe, I think what I can do is meet, uh, excuse me, is, is, is maybe move our standing uh, team meeting each day at, at 930. Would it, would it benefit you if I was able to move that time at 930 for the time being so that you could maybe plug in uh, some time with your project team on a daily basis? Yeah, yeah, that, that might be helpful, actually, because then I could see what what's on the to do list for that day and, and, and get with the team and make sure it, it's getting done. Uh, that might be really helpful, actually. Excellent. Well, yeah, I think, you know, there's definitely going to be roadblocks ahead, but I think if we can clear up that time, that would be helpful. I, you know, another question that I had for you right now is when it comes to prioritization, Teo, do you feel like you're clear right now on the things that you need to own yourself uh, as well as what you might need to delegate to other members of the team? Um, well, I mean, that's tricky, right? Because when you say delegate, I I don't know if I'm comfortable delegating anything to anyone at this point. I, I feel like everyone's got their own stuff to do. And I just, I mean, I, I am overwhelmed. That's true. I've, I've, I've got a lot on my plate, but I don't know if I can really ask anyone for help in this regard. I think everyone's just too busy. One suggestion that I would make, I think there's a real power in, in, in letting go. And I think that the more educational and learning time, even in this short time span, that if we can look at ways to maybe free up your calendar from some of the meetings that I own or just other cross-functional meetings in the organization that we could maybe free up for you to have a little bit more time so that you can spend with your team. Uh, because what I wanted to be able to do is just walk you through a brief exercise, uh, very simple. It's something that I've used uh, effectively with other project teams before. I, I call it own partner delegate. And it's just as, it's just as you'd expect it to be. And maybe uh, one thing that I'd like to ask of you is when we meet again tomorrow morning, if you don't mind taking a current snapshot at the remaining project tasks and the plan over the next two weeks, I'd like you to see if you could highlight all of the pieces that you can own, uh, what you might need to partner with other folks, not just on the project team, but across the organization on to ensure project success. But okay. I want you to really give some deep thought to thinking what can I actually delegate and what can I empower others to do right now? Does that sound like a good uh, consensus? Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that. Um, mostly, I, I think the encounter that I'm, I'm worried about is if I delegate some to someone and I have to teach someone how to do something, that's going to take more time than if I did it myself. So uh, I guess I'm just concerned about time stuck that way. Well, how about, and that's a very valid point. How about this? Let's see if we could connect uh, briefly tomorrow in, in the one-on-one -on -one that we're going to have together. And I want to see if I could be able to provide support to you in terms of maybe helping and partnering with you on that endeavor uh, to determine, you know, ways that maybe we can reduce the time lag and that it would take to explain certain tasks to certain people. But I think I've already identified a couple people in mind that might be of help. And so, I just think if you could maybe think through right now for yourself or over the course of the next 24 hours, you know, the, the activities that are going to be most beneficial uh, that you can maybe let go of. Uh, I hope what that will do for you, that by having that structure in place, it's going to be able to get you set up uh, for success over the next two weeks and free up some of that time that you maybe weren't sure that you had. Yeah, I can definitely take a look at that. I mean, having a little bit extra time uh, to do the things that are most important would definitely be helpful for me. Do you think that by having some of those habits in place that I, do you, could you see that helping to improve the way that you feel overall in terms of maybe reducing that overwhelming feeling? Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I think we just have to get over this hump and, and, and this project has been, it, it's been rough for everybody. Um, I, I think that if we could prioritize what's going on, maybe that'll that'll definitely help with the the overwhelming feeling that's been, you know, plaguing me, I think. Excellent. Well, I think prioritization is going to be key here for sure, Teo. And and I, I really 
really appreciate your willingness to meet me uh, where, where we are right now and come meet in the middle. So uh, thank you. And you know, I look forward to connecting with you again later, okay? Hi, Christopher. I just wanted to uh, cut us off a little bit early so that we could save some time for Q&A at the end and have a little bit of reflection. But um, uh, my first question for you is, uh, how, do you, how do you feel that the conversation went? I think Teo uh, became more amenable over time to some new ideas and in terms of uh, coaching in this instance and more of a performance-based coaching. Uh, I was trying to influence uh, new thought and ideas into the equation. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I picked up on immediately was that, you know, he felt overwhelmed because he didn't have as much time. And so right. I think it's one thing to introduce a, a strategy or a plan, but it's another thing to try to meet him where he is and be empathetic and compassionate to the feeling of overwhelm that he has. Because, you know, the other thing from a coaching standpoint that I was thoughtful about from the beginning was this is someone who's performed well and who's gotten his projects done on time previously. And so things have changed a little bit recently. And I think I could sense in the way that he was responding that it was a little bit more external factors than internal. Absolutely. He, he definitely was giving some body language that he was feeling stressed and overwhelmed. Um, if there was anything that you could do differently, would there, would there be anything if you could do it over that you would add to the conversation? Yeah, I, I think just even to, to be critical of myself, I, I you know, I'm, I'm such a big practitioner of, of empathy, of, of maybe even beginning that way and, and, and saying, you know, Teo, I, I, I understand where you're coming from and, and I'm here to listen to you. And uh, as we begin to set up the rest of the picture over the next two weeks, I just want to make sure that, you know, you're in the right place of where you need to be for yourself and that uh, you know, showing acceptance and showing some more empathy up front, I think could have been a little bit more helpful. I could see that. He definitely wanted to uh, underplay how overwhelmed he was, I think. Um, and maybe that was because of a, maybe a cultural expectation of the workplace of that, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of high performers don't want to complain about their workloads, you know? So I agree if you had given him some, some room uh, in the empathy department right off the bat, maybe we could have gotten some more, um, elicited more of a uh, buy-in from, from the beginning because he seemed very hesitant. He definitely did. And, and, and there's no doubt about it. I think that one tool that, uh, you know, whether you're a manager or frankly, you know, in, in a position of leadership, I think, you know, we hear a lot these days about psychological safety, right? But it's, it's, it's creating that place where I think that he can feel um, especially knowing that, you know, he's, he's kind of got the capital. He's proven uh, previously through his performance that he's maybe uh, earned a little bit of extra uh, time, so to speak. But I think in terms of a value of respect and, you know, treating him with, with, uh, with decency, of course, is just setting the table for things. Yeah. Empathy and acceptance and, and letting him know that, you know, it's okay. We're, we're going to get through this a little bit more. And I, I do see that rounding out of, of the motivational, of, of kind of extrinsic motivation there uh, from a leadership standpoint could help someone like that, especially if they're hesitant to kind of lay all their cards out on the table there in the beginning. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed watching you practice this conversation with Teo. Um, it's almost as if you do this for a living. <laughs> Thank you, Nina. This was truly awesome. I, I, I've uh, enjoyed experiencing this every time and you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for modeling that behavior for us as well. And I think to your point, it's this is why we, we practice these things and, and we have coaches like you because it's difficult to come in with ideas and strategies and to relay those. You're, you're thinking, well, I can help this person out, but you've got to... Uh, bring them along and, and to your point, meet them where they are and, and open up that conversation so that they can hear you and be willing to, to accept and, and work with you and, and hear how that might make a change for the positive. Appreciate how grateful everybody was and appreciate the time that you dedicated to be here with me today and, and with Jamie and Mersion. And so I hope everybody got a lot out of this. Yeah. And I, I look forward to, uh, strategizing uh, for myself better as I, as I move through my week. So uh, to everyone, I wish you well, have a blessed day and we will see you next week. Christopher, thank you again.